Hey class, uh, happy Tuesday. Sorry about the delay on this. I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, it's only two problems and they're pretty straightforward. I even left it till Friday. So just, you know, uh, if you have any questions, or if you need a little more time, I can be understanding. Next week we're on spring break, so that's awesome. Uh, other than that, Cerritos College just gave me the thumbs up on giving college credit for this course, regardless of the situation. doesn't mean that you can earn a C and get college credit. It means that I get the judgment call on what a B is determined as. So I'm going to obviously be looking at your first semester grades, your third quarter grades, <clears throat> and then the rate of completion of all these assignments for the rest of the year. Uh, not doing these assignments, I, I will tell you right now, will disqualify you from getting that college credit. Um, there is a minimum expectation. But if you need more time, if you need more help, just let me know. Um, and then I'm going to have to make, you know, essentially a judgment call so we can work together. So wait for those kind of announcements in the next upcoming weeks. But otherwise, why don't we jump into this assignment so I don't talk forever, right? So this assignment uh, is going to, it's called for a while. And that's because we're going to be using for and while loops. And this chart right here that I provided to you really goes into details about what the difference between a for loop and while loop is. And one of the things I highly disagree with on the learn C is that while loops have less functionality. I don't agree with that at all. They're, they're a completely separate type of functionality. It, it depends on the situation. If I know I'm going to have a set number of iterations, like I'm going to need to run this 10 times, 5 times, 6 times, whatever you know number of iterations is, then yeah, I'm going to use a for loop. It's straightforward enough and doesn't require a ton of syntax knowledge. But if I'm going to go ahead and run something infinitely, or if I'm going to run it until a condition is true, and I don't know how many iterations that's going to take, then a while loop is incredibly valuable. I'll give you an example of a while loop. Anytime you walk through a sliding door at the grocery store, or when you walk into a room with an automatic sensor, that's not using a for loop, that's using a while loop, because the sensor always needs to know is there someone there or not, right? In robotics, I'm using while loops, or the group is using while loops all the time. And that's because you're going to say, like, while this sensor value is less than or equal to this value, run this code. As soon as that's met, then go ahead and stop. It's kind of like saying my arm. I don't know how many iterations of motor on I have to run. But what I can say is motor on of my shoulder until I'm at 90 degrees. So until my potentiometer or my you know, whatever it is, gyroscope, any kind of sensor you're using hits the 90 degree value, turn off motor and lock, right? It's so kind of dependent on the situation. So I definitely wouldn't say it's less functional. It depends on the scenario. So our activity today is going to require you to review if loops, for loops, and while loops. And this first activity, it's very similar to the bonus. So I decided to include it in this activity since I had so few people do it. But even if you did do it, this is a new assignment with very similar kind of, you know, feel to it. What you're going to do is you're given this array and inside of it, there's 10 values. Nums 10 is 10, 17, 28, 23, 13, 7, 31, 11, 2, and 18. And you're supposed to create a for loop that will pick out the maximum value. Now, a couple things to note on this one. Last week, one of the things that I noticed was this incorrect... Um, this kind of interpretation that nums zero, nums one was this first value. And that's not how it's mapped out. The very first value in the array is considered the zero value. And so nums zero is actually 10. There's something else that if you don't know how many um, values your array is going to be, you can just leave this blank. You don't have to like if I wanted to add values to it, I can. The other thing I saw last week is that there was a few folks that uh, forgot to include their braces of a for loop. And you may think that it's not really necessary in this situation. It will be when we have a for if loop, you're gonna really wanna space it out appropriately, especially when you're doing just one printf. So one of the things I'm gonna say for this activity is first, you can initialize, so I just initialized this, this variable, right? Or sorry, this uh, array. The other thing is, what I'm going to say is, you're going to have to go ahead and fill in the four conditions. And I don't know that I is going to start at zero, but it should, because if I'm saying that, you know, essentially that this is I, then I want to start again at the zero mark. If you make this one, 
you're going to be starting at the 17 and that's not the right approach because what if the the first value was actually the greatest right so you want to start at zero don't forget your semicolons in between how many iterations and then your i plus plus that tells me that every time i is increasing by one all right and on top of that you're going to do an if statement so if excuse me condition and then you're going to do your new braces. And this is what you're going to infill. So four allows you to run it. And then the last thing is your printf should be outside of these. So what you're going to be printing out is that the maximum value is that 31, but you're only going to print it once. What I don't want to see is 10 different iterations of that, that you know print statement. I just need to see the one final one. So give it a shot. Let me know. I think you guys will work through this one. You know, I already gave you a lot of structure. So if you're watching this video, that's like a lot more help than I probably should have given. But I want to jump into this one, the while loop, because I want to take a second to go ahead and go over a couple of things that were in this, um, because I think it's important. So the break and continue, I'm not really going to reference, nor do I necessarily utilize them. Although you can use them um, if you if you want to go for it. I don't I don't actually mind. And just because I give you hints on how to make the code doesn't mean that it needs to look exactly the way I expect it. Um, it just needs to make sense. And I'll give you pointers on whether I like it or dislike it. But one thing I want to bring up is the following. It's this symbol right here. And I want to go over this line as a whole. If n percentage symbol 2 is equal, equal to 1, continue. So I want to make sure I bring up what the percentage symbol means. This is called, um, I think it's called the modular operator. Uh, I just say mod. Most people just say like, you know, mod two, right? Mod one, mod three. So what mod modular operation does is take the n value, divide it by this value, and then the output that you're getting is the remainder. So if I say something like, if, you know, uh, let's go num i percent three equals equals one right what i'm getting there is if i take the 10 so let's start off with the first one right zero if 10 divided by three is equal equal to one then run this condition that is true so if true run this condition so would 10 divided by 3 equal equal 1? Yeah, because 10 divided by 3 is 3. So 3 goes into 10 three times. So 3 times 3 is 9, and I have a remainder of 1. So that is true. 17. Uh, 17 divided by 3 is a remainder of 2. False. 28 divided by 3 is, what goes, uh, 9? Yeah, 9, uh, 9 times 3 is 27. So you have a remainder of one, true. So you'll notice that what this is doing is this function is creating a way, it's most commonly used just so you guys know to separate between odd or even. And it's the most common is to say mod two because then you're always gonna be able to determine even or odd. So in this activity, I want you to use mod and you really should use mod, um, that percentage symbol to determine is that value even or odd? And if even, then spit out the value of sequence, you know, sequence zero is even. The value of sequence one is odd. Is odd. Obviously, this is going to be odd, odd. So I even give you what it's supposed to look like. Note that this is where I made the, the error of not including the right printout. I accidentally just didn't snip out the right thing. So um, it should be odd, odd, even, odd, 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 even, odd. So I should only see two even numbers when we go back to our loop that makes sense it's this one and this one so there really is only two even values all right this is a good demonstration to show you that sequence zero is the one that's you know you're going to end with sequence nine on sequence 10 so make sure to make note of that all right otherwise i give you guys some pretty good support go ahead and snip it at the end if you have questions i'll be here for office hours otherwise take care folks i hope you guys are well i'm sorry for the longer than expected video 
but um, otherwise reach out if you have any questions. Take care, folks.